So, estimados amigos de la Fundación Chilena del Pacífico, buenos días y gracias por sumarse a otra de nuestras actividades online. Nos alegra realizar un capítulo más en el marco de nuestra Ambassador Series, verdadera marca registrada entre nuestras actividades. Como la mayoría de nuestra fiel audiencia seguro que sabe, la Ambassador Series se trata de conversaciones con embajadores que, en virtud de las prioridades comerciales, captación de inversiones y políticas en general de nuestro país, adquieren un carácter estratégico. Hoy sumamos India a los diálogos que ya hemos sostenido a lo largo de los últimos años con los embajadores de Canadá, Australia, Nueva Zelanda, Singapur, Japón, Corea y China. La Ambassador Series quiere abrir un espacio para discutir tendencias que afectan a la región del Asia-Pacífico, Indo-Pacífico, en varios aspectos, incluida la geopolítica, la cooperación internacional y la marcha de acuerdos y foros multilaterales de distinta naturaleza. Buscamos ex explorar los ángulos de la relación entre Chile y estas naciones con mirada de presente y futuro. Con esta actividad centrada en India, del mismo modo, continuamos con nuestro apoyo a los esfuerzos de acercamiento de ese país que llevan adelante las autoridades chilenas, tanto a través de las distintas instituciones del Estado en Chile como por medio de nuestros representantes políticos y comerciales en India. Este año, además, en la Fundación hemos colaborado activamente en las actividades de promoción que ProChile lideró el mes pasado en India. En esa ocasión tuve el honor de moderar dos paneles de conversación para explorar el potencial de colaboración entre Chile e India en el ámbito de innovación, ecosistemas de startups e internacionalización de pequeñas y medianas empresas. Conversaremos sobre esa misión de ProChile, un verdadero hito, entre varios otros asuntos en el diálogo de esta mañana. Procedo ahora a presentar a nuestra invitada, la embajadora de India, Abilasha Yoshi. La embajadora empezó su misión en nuestro país hace muy poco y esta es probablemente una de sus primeras apariciones de este tipo. Y muchas gracias, embajadora, de nuevo por haber aceptado nuestra invitación hoy día. La embajadora Abilasha Yoshi, quien asumió el cargo de representante de India en Chile el primero de junio de este año, se unió al Servicio Exterior Indio en 1995. Su primera asignación en el extranjero fue en la Embajada en Portugal en 1998, después de la cual regresó a Nueva Delhi y fue nombrada subsecretaria para Sri Lanka y para la South Asia Asian Association of Regional Cooperation, conocida como SARC. Se desempeñó como oficial regional de pasaportes en Visaka Patnam y posteriormente fue destinada al Consulado General de India en Sao Paulo, Brasil, donde se desempeñó como cónsul comercial entre el 2008 y el 2012. Con posterioridad, ocupó el cargo de directora general adjunta en el Consejo Indio de Relaciones Culturales. Regresó a Brasil como cónsul general en Sao Paulo entre el 2014 y 2017. Y después se desempeñó como cónsul general en Vancouver, Canadá, desde el 2017 al 2020. Desde esa fecha y hasta su asignación en Chile, se encargó de la administración de asociaciones para el desarrollo en materia de desarrollo de capacidades y conservación del patrimonio. So that was my introduction of, of your person, uh, Ambassador, and uh, thank you once again for joining us today. Uh, I'm going to switch to English, and I'm very sorry for our audience, but we had a problem with our interpreter. We don't know where he is. <laughs> maybe, maybe we, we hope that he's he's health healthy. That's the, mo the, the biggest concern. But uh, we, we apologize for that, that we're going to have to hold this webinar in English. But most of our audience, I'm sure, they will be able to follow successfully. And um, you, you may, for the audience, if you, you have any questions for the ambassador, you may do it in the Q&A uh, uh, um, uh, bottom that you have at the bottom of your screen. And uh, I will select some of those questions uh, regarding the, the, the conversation that we're going to have with the ambassador. So I'm going to start, Ambassador, with this uh, first high-level mission to India, led by ProChile and with the participation of Chile's Ministers of Foreign Affairs and Agriculture. That just came to an end a few days ago. So what's your overall view of the outcomes of the mission, as far as you are informed of what was, what was the outreach of the, of, the, of the trip, Ambassador? First of all, good morning, buenos dias, and namaste to all of you. And at the outset, firstly, thank you for inviting me to this session. 
And I also want to convey greetings on behalf of all of us at the Indian Embassy to all of you, to the people of Chile for your National Day, which is coming up soon. So uh, it's a great time to be here. And uh, as you know, this year, we are also celebrating 75 years of diplomatic relations between India and Chile. We are very happy that the mission to India happened very recently in August. It was led by your foreign minister with a very good participation of business community and the agriculture minister of Chile. From all accounts that I have seen and read, I think that it was a very successful mission. And we are very happy that the foreign minister of Chile visited India after a gap of several years. The last visit happened in 2009. So this is indeed a very good reinvigoration for our diplomatic ties. And uh, you know that the second India-Chile Joint Commission meeting was chaired by our external affairs minister and by the foreign minister of Chile. So that has indeed uh, significantly enhanced and strengthened our relations. It's a very important mechanism uh, to review the entire gamut of bilateral relations between our two countries. You know that with Chile, uh, we have uh, the earliest PTA with Chile, which has really enhanced our relations and trade and commerce between the two countries. Of course, there is a lot more potential. And uh, missions such as the Chile Summit India are very important activities to take further this type of cooperation for the businesses to interact and to know each other to see what are the opportunities that are there in various sectors for both our countries. Yeah, and regarding that, the, the just what you just said, Ambassador, which Chilean sectors would you say could benefit in the first place from missions like this one? So, um, of course, you know, agricultural products are something that are very important for Chile. And uh, I see that they are looking at the Indian market in a very positive manner uh, to introduce uh, uh, their fruits and uh, uh, wines, agricultural uh, products, uh, which uh, we hope, uh, we are already seeing a, a great beginning. In fact, we are one of the largest importers from Chile of walnuts. Uh, so there are uh, cherries are also recently introduced, salmon fish, wines. So Chile is slowly making an entry in the food sector in India. And as far as India is concerned, uh, critical minerals are something that is very important for us. And Chile is an important partner country in that respect. There are several other sectors, automobiles, pharmaceuticals, IT. So uh, startups, we see a lot of potential. Yeah, and regarding exactly about that, the, because we, we in this Chile summit, we discuss a lot on the potential of India startup scale-up ecosystem and what what that could be a possibility for Chilean startups to join this ecosystem. What what What's your take on this, Ambassador? I think uh, startup is a very important sector because Chile has a very vibrant startup program. And similarly, India is also one of the largest in terms of the startup ecosystem. We have more than 100 unicorns in India, and the government is giving a lot of incentive and creating the right environment to promote startups in terms of new ideas, new uh, industries, workforce, and uh, uh, new technology. So I think there is a lot of uh, complementarity, and this is definitely an area where we would like to see further work together. In fact, in India, we have startup bridge programs with several countries around the world. Almost with 20 other countries, we have startup bridge programs where the startups of each country get opportunities to visit another country with which we have the partnership and explore opportunities uh, to scale up their innovations and bring them at business scale. So also the uh, interaction between the academia, the industry, and the innovators, I think that is very important. And I really hope that in future with Chile, where we really have so much complementarity, I hope we will be able to work further on this aspect. Yes, indeed. And, and, and regarding the, the panel that I had the chance to moderate, um, we, we discussed with one of the panelists uh, the, the possibility of 
Chilean startups getting access to Indian venture capital. Do you do you think that that's a possibility, Ambassador? Yes. Yes, of course, there are lots of financing options. And mm -hmm. once we have a formal arrangement, then all these aspects would come into play. Uh, so first, you have to have, you, you, you suggest that it would be good to join the Startup Bridge program. That was the name of, of this. Yes, that would be yes. the first step to, to, uh, to move forward. Yes, I think so. Ah, okay. Okay. So, uh, Ambassador, uh, how would you say Chile is mostly perceived among Indian consumers? Because Chile has been striving to position itself a, a, as a supplier of world-class agri-products agri for many years. Would you say this is how the country is perceived in India? Specifically, what I saw during our visit is that we have tried to position as a very secure country and that have high quality agricultural products. That, that's something that we're trying to, to, to put forward uh, when we try to access the new markets as, as the Indian could be. What, what do you think of that? What, how are we perceived so far? So I think the geographical distance and the fact that both our countries are quite far apart, logistics is also a big challenge. So although there are a lot of business potential and opportunities, I think there is still a lot of untapped potential. When you talk about how Chile is perceived in India, definitely not many people, frankly, would know about the large opportunities that exist between our two countries. Chile is perceived as a very exotic uh, and a beautiful country with uh, you know uh, exotic locations, uh, as a tourist destination, as the leader in copper. But again, as far as uh, actual opportunities, I think a lot more people to people and business to business interaction is required. Uh, the products that have recently entered the Chilean market have captured the imag imagination for sure. The walnuts are extremely good quality, cherries are uh, picking up, and people are slowly getting to know that uh, there uh, is a lot of potential in, in this kind of bilateral uh, trade and engagement. But I would uh, I would feel that there is still a lot of, uh, you know, uh, lack of information, I would say. Uh, even here about India, we also don't have a very large diaspora in Chile, like in other countries. Uh, culture here is, uh, Indian culture has pervaded to quite an extent. But uh, I think actual knowledge about both the two countries and the potential, that is really uh, something we need to work on. Yes. It, it, well, it, for the first one, we would have to say that first, India hasn't been as open as they try to be today to the world. So it was very difficult for us to reach you. And also because of the logistical um, issues that we have, that they're so far away and uh, so so much has to be done. But the first thing and what we have learned of, of this visit and we what we have learned of what, of all the conversation is that the 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 getting to know people uh, in a long term basis is very important. You have to establish this connection and to talk and to go. So, having said that, do, do you think that would you recommend carrying on out more events like the Chile Summit India 2024? And if so, based on the characteristics of Indian consumers, would you include additional activities? perhaps adding more face-in-face -face events with consumers? Yes, of course. I mean, uh, uh, you know, face-to-face -face events, meetings, business delegations, that is a very important part of building and deepening the relationship. On our part, we are always uh, promoting international trade fairs that take place in Chile. And in fact, we have had a very substantial uh, presence of Indian companies that have been participating in international trade events in Chile. In mm -hmm. fact, very recently uh, this year, even before I had joined, there was a hundred uh, member strong pharma delegation who participated, uh, who did a standalone event here, in fact, the IFX LATAM. We also had 25 handicraft companies with the Export Promotion Council of Handicrafts. 
Similarly, in the mining sector, there are fairs. Indian companies have been regularly coming to Chile uh, with large business delegations participating in the fairs here. The reverse, uh, I'm not sure how much participation there has been there in Indian, uh, uh, you know, trade events uh, from Chilean companies. It is not as much as we would like. And uh, we do uh, keep uh, uh, promoting the international events that take place in India from time to time. There are 15 to 20 major trade events which are in multi-sectors or different sectors, which could be of great interest to Chilean business. There are uh, special uh, trade fairs which are focused on the food uh, sector, for example. So we do extend these invitations to the relevant trade uh, bodies and the trade associations here. And uh, we hope that participation in these events will increase. Many of these events also have hosted buyer-seller meetings. So you would get the right business contacts. They also have some benefits in terms of reimbursement of partial airfare and uh, local transport, hospitality, some amount of hospitality. So I think these are important opportunities which have to be further explored uh, by the businesses of both the countries. Yes, well, very interesting, Ambassador. And, and it's very important to, to get people to know this, that they, they, they have these opportunities and well, there's a lot to do in that sense. But Definitely, India is, is is starting to be a lot more well known in in our country, and there's a lot of interest in in trying to explore these new opportunities, and they see it as a huge opportunity. So we hope that this is going to improve, and also we hope that that what has to do with trade also uh, is is a reflect of this this improvement. And uh, say about this, uh, despite this enormous potential. Considering the continental scale of India, now officially the world's most populated country, the bilateral trade between India and Chile remains rel relatively small, with $2,846 billion as, as of December 2023, signaling a 4.6% annual average growth over a five-year period. It is clear that there is, a, there is significant room for growth. What are your expectations as to the near future for bilateral trade, Ambassador? Would you say Chile has the potential to become one of the most important trade partners for India in South America? And also considering that we were the first country to, to sign any kind of trade agreement with India in Latin America. So as I, as I mentioned in an in a, in a, um, uh, article that I wrote for the, for the newspaper, I, I, I positioned us as the first movers that we should take that opportunity. What do you think of that, Ambassador? Yes, Chile has definitely been very futuristic and one of the first movers in terms of signing a preferential trade agreement with India. And you have several other PTAs and FTAs, trade agreements with so many countries around the world. So certainly Chile is a very important uh, and priority partner country uh, for us. You have seen that after the PTA was signed and after the PTA was expanded, the trade definitely increased on both sides. And it has definitely uh, impacted on uh, further growth. And uh, we hope that uh, this will continue to grow. During the COVID years, of course, there was a decline, but that was everywhere. But it is very encouraging that even uh, now recently, the trade has been picking up very rapidly. In fact, uh, Chilean exports to India have grown quite rapidly. In, uh, even uh, if you discount the copper-related trade, there are other sectors also uh, that have uh, significantly grown. Similarly, for India, we also have a, a diverse trade baskets uh, basket. So other than, uh, you know, our pharma and IT related uh, the trade, there are other uh, areas like uh, uh, vehicles and engineering related services, goods and products for the mining industry. So all that two way trade is happening. But yes, there is still a lot more potential which uh, uh, both sides have to work on. And for us, uh, Chile is, uh, you know, it could be like an entry point for the rest of Latin America. You have such a vast network of FTAs 
with other countries. So that is something definitely that uh, we should be uh, working on and uh, uh, looking at. Yes, indeed, and and that's the way that we we would like to be position to position uh, ourselves uh, as a hub and, and, and as a way of getting in, into other countries, um, like also going into what is the Pacific Alliance, um, etc. So the, the the big opportunities there, and uh, Ambassador, one aspect that has historically been signaled as India's Achilles heel is the infrastructure needed to transport and deliver perishable goods and other products sensitive to delivery time. Has this situation significantly changed in India and on the country's increasing openness to international trade over the last quite few years? Yes, uh, definitely uh, there is a lot of focus on upgrading the infrastructure. And in fact, in the last 10 years, even when you have visited, you would have seen that there is a lot of change so I would encourage Chilean business persons and the relevant uh, partners to actually visit India and see for themselves the sea change and the rapid pace of development that is taking place today. The government is giving a huge push on infrastructure, uh, whether it is the highways connectivity, whether it is the railway and freight corridors. In fact, very recently, the government has announced 12 industrial freight corridors. And this is not something new, but this has uh, uh, been going on since uh, uh, quite some time. In fact, you might have heard of the Bharat Mala project, which is the uh, road highway connectivity to connect each and every part of India uh, to ensure last mile connectivity. You are aware of our railway network, which is one of the largest in the world. And uh, we have dedicated freight corridors. We are now one of the largest green railways in the world, where more than 90% of our railway network is electrified. We have a scheme called Uran, which is for the uh, aviation sector. We are one of the third largest domestic aviation markets in the world today. Similarly, we have a project called Sagar Mala, which is for improving the ports and waterways in India. So whether it is roads, railways, ports, and airports, uh, every facet of infrastructure is being worked on, improved, and modernized. We have 12 major ports in India. We have more than 7,500 kilometers of coastline. We have 200 minor ports, and several waterways are being developed. So all this is to ensure that goods and services get the support and reach on time because time is critical to perishable goods as we all know. We yeah. are also focusing a lot on cold chain storage. Uh, so these are definitely things that the government is working on. And uh, there is, uh, I would also like to inform you about uh, uh, the Prime Minister's initiative for Gati Shakti, which is the national master plan. So all these various components feed into and are guided by the national master plan. And I'm sure that in the coming years, India will develop into a very big industrial hub and a logistics center. So there is a lot of hope on that. And we do have problems. I agree and I uh, you know, appreciate that there are still things to be done, but there is a lot of work going on in India. Yeah, that that that's something that w w while we were on in off, we, we hadn't started. You asked me if this was the first time that I had a chance to go to India, and no, I went there um, twenty years ago, more or less. And uh, definitely, there has been a lot of change, and uh, you can see that the 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 um, the investment in infrastructure and there's a lot being constructed. There's a lot of energy going on that uh, that uh, you can see that is improving. Um, Ambassador, may, may, may I make a little pause because our interpreter just joined us. He had a cut down on electricity in his home and, and, and that's why he couldn't join. So for the audience that would like to follow this in Spanish, now you have available. Uh, I'm going to switch to Spanish. Eh? Para la audiencia que quiera seguir el, 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 el resto del webinar en español, está disponible ahora la interpretación en español. Para los que quieran eh, seguirlo eh, más fácil para, para, para poder eh, seguir la conversación. 
y aprovecho de invitarlos a hacer preguntas también a aquellos que quieran eh, hacer preguntas también. Thank you, Ambassador. Um, eh, on, on the other way around, what, what opportunities are the Indian exporters seeing in Chile? I, I think that you mentioned some about it, but I don't know if you can, you can extend on that. What are the Indian export sectors most likely to benefit from an overhaul trade agreement between both countries? And now that we are, we are trying to improve our PTA and deepening it, there will maybe more opportunities. What do you see? Or what are your hopes? What would you like to, to see while you are here in, 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 in Chile as a, as a dream for your mission? We would, there are a lot of sectors that hold potential and we would like to see more cooperation in the critical mineral sector for sure. And uh, engineering goods and services is something where we can contribute. And uh, we hope that this will uh, be something that will take off in a bigger way in the coming years. Even now, there are some uh, Indian companies that are present here and supplying equipment and products which are relevant for the mining sector. And these are very high quality and uh, uh, high tech equipment. So it is a win-win situation for uh, both uh, the partners. Other than that, our uh, pharma exports, again, there is still a lot of potential. They could grow. Uh, the IT sector, we have uh, some uh, uh, big Indian companies. TCS is here, in fact, and there's EvaluServe. And between the two of them, uh, more than 2,500 local Chileans are uh, getting employment in this sector. So IT is, again, a sector that has a lot of potential. Textiles and handicrafts. And of course, Indian agri products, there is scope, a lot of scope for growth. So we would definitely like to see all these uh, products coming into Chile in the coming years in a bigger way. Yeah, and and uh, no, that that would be that would be wonderful, Ambassador. And on another area, uh, um, because part of the mission in in India was uh, it included. Um, uh, the the culture and art and uh, filmmaking and um, we 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 got in touch with the part of the Bollywood industry uh, we had the chance to meet some of the prominent actors as well and uh, in in this uh, Chile summit and um, regarding that what how do you see the the possibilities of deepening this because we we position ourselves for, as a as a as an interesting um country to to bring the, this part of the filmmaking this big industry and also in what has to do with with um with students and there's a question here actually in the in the q a this it says what kind of facilities the indian government offers for studying a master's degree in your country for example because we have these very interesting possibilities with australia new zealand and other countries what 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 is happening with India in this in this ground? Because on in what has to do with IT, and I, I'm sure that we could gain a lot in having access for your wonderful universities, etc. What are what are the possibilities today? So uh, regarding the film sector, first, yes. Okay, that is of course something which is very interesting, and I think the Indian film industry is very very dynamic, and they are always on the lookout for exotic locales. And I think in that aspect, Chile fits the bill perfectly because you have every type of landscape. You have the desert, you have the ocean, you have the snow-capped mountains and uh, the glaciers. So I don't think uh, there's, uh, you know, any aspect uh, in terms of beautiful landscape that is missing. And I hope that the Indian film industry will uh, start looking at Chile. They have, of course, explored various parts of the world. Connectivity would be uh, an issue, definitely, uh, but I really hope that uh, they will look at this possibility very seriously in the coming years. So uh, we we hope, and in fact, uh, you know, Bollywood, yoga, Indian dances are already quite popular here in Chile. So I hope that the film industry will capitalize on the opportunities and the prospects. 
coming to your second question about uh, the possibilities for students, well, that is an area which uh, we really want to work on. Uh, we hope that uh, students from here will look at the opportunities that are available in India. We are trying to build partnerships with various universities here. Uh, Indian students, very few are coming to Chile uh, in uh, very specialized areas like, of course, STEM and astrophysics. But we also want uh, students from Chile to go to India. There are a limited uh, number of scholarships that the Indian government offers. We have uh, very few scholarships from the Indian Council for Cultural Relations or the ICCR, which could be used for master's programs also. Uh, there is another program called ITEC, which is the Indian Technical and Economic Cooperation. Uh, it is part of our development partnership. But uh, this is uh, more for working professionals. And it is more for upskilling and mid-career trainings. But there are fantastic opportunities. There are some, uh, you asked about master's programs. There are also some master's uh, programs which are included in the ITEC program. In fact, at the Indian Institute of Technology, uh, the IIT, which is uh, very well known uh, around the world, uh, IIT Rurki offers some master's MTech programs through the uh, ITEC cooperation. So all the information is available on our website. And uh, we do work through the relevant stakeholders in Chile to uh, spread information about the opportunities that are available. We have 25 scholarship slots uh, every year for Chile, but this is for working professionals and uh, uh, some of these could be for masters also. There is also an interesting trend. There are some private universities in India which are offering scholarships to uh, students from Chile. In fact, we had a very specific offer from one of the universities in India. Uh, uh, they are giving 20 scholarships for Chilean students, for undergraduate, for masters, uh, for even uh, PhD programs. So I hope uh, those who are listening and interested uh, to this series, they will reach out to us at the embassy so that we can share further information about this to anyone who is interested to pursue these opportunities. We are also trying to encourage uh, uh, universities here to have collaboration with uh, universities in India, which will facilitate this two-way exchange. In fact, uh, Puk University recently uh, visited India. They had uh, meetings with uh, uh, several universities in Delhi and in Bengaluru. And uh, I hope that this kind of academic engagement will continue because this is a, an area definitely where there is a lot of scope and potential. Absolutely, Ambassador, absolutely. And, and in that way, you really get to put together both countries. Anyone that studies in India and comes back to Chile, he will have a view of that country that he will be for the rest of, 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 of his professional life and the other way around as well. So definitely this is a very important starting point to build up a stronger relationship. So. Thank you very much for all that information. And, and, and there were other questions in the chat related to that. So I'm sure that they're very happy to learn about all these possibilities. And um, eh, I have another question here in, in, in the chat that says, eh, if what, what is the, the, the equivalent of Protile in India? If, if someone is interested in exporting to India, uh, what, what would you suggest to, to, to contact? What is the, will be the equivalent or do you suggest or do you suggest just to go to through Pro Chile to explore this possibility? And um, and what would you recommend to to better communicate with um, potential uh, eh, proveedores, um, um, sellers from India? Eh, so so they can learn better what kind of products are possible to export to India to get to, le to learn more about the, the, the products and, and what are the possibilities of exporting. Would you suggest to go through the Chilean institutions or you can ask to, to suggest to contact any other institution in India directly to do this? What, what are your views on that? So as far as uh, equivalent to Pro Chile, we have an organization called Invest India 
which is kind of equivalent to Pro Chile. Of course, that is for attracting investments into India. So any Chilean companies which want to open an office or they want to establish any joint venture or partnership in India, they can definitely be in touch with Invest India, which is a hand-holding organization. They do a lot of feasibility work. They would help in end-to-end -end, uh, solutions, help in finding the right partner, arranging meetings from the initial stage till, uh, you know, uh, finalization of the project. So that is an important uh, organization that Chilean uh, businesses could approach. Uh, here at the embassy also, we have a commercial wing and any trade queries or reaching out to the right contacts in India uh, could be also routed through uh, the embassy. We would be happy to facilitate any uh, relevant contacts for the Chilean companies which are looking for them. There are several sectoral associations in India. So whether it is for the automobiles, whether it is for the food sector, or uh, whether it is for textiles, sourcing of engineering products. So there are several associations like, uh, you know, pharma and handicrafts I already mentioned. There is EEPC for engineering uh, uh, goods and services. There is the Automobiles Association. Uh, so every sector uh, have their own export uh, and the sectoral associations bodies. So we could uh, help in uh, connecting with the right uh, agencies in India for any trade related queries. Wonderful Ambassador, thank you so much. And regarding now foreign direct investment, as you may know, one of Chile's long lasting objectives, objectives as to foreign investment attraction has been to position the country as a hub for strategic, for, for strategic investment so that invest, investors could provide services to neighboring countries from Chile. Would you say this is an idea that gets traction among Indian investors? Yes, I think uh, to quite an extent. In fact, uh, the data figures that we have uh, so far from 2003 to 2023, that's a long time. Indian investment has been of 620 million US dollars in Chile. And uh, there are significant opportunities for expanding and scaling up uh, these investments. Uh, in fact, companies like TCS, uh, which are located here, are not only yeah. catering to uh, the Chilean market, but also to other countries in the region. So those who are present here uh, utilize their location as a hub for reaching out and expanding their services to other countries. So certainly there is a lot of potential and we hope in the future, in fact, our um, uh, you know companies which are related to the mining sector are also doing uh, very few, very limited, but they have a presence here and they can reach out their operations to other countries. Then there is Kalpataru, which is uh, recently they have won a project here in power transmission lines. They are also doing projects in Brazil. They are based in Brazil. They also have an office here. So definitely the entire region can, uh, you know, uh, be served by the companies who invest here in Chile. Yeah, and, and and there's a question here from Christian Schott that is a is a very loyal part of our audience. Uh, what are the possibilities of investing in infrastructure in Chile from, from from Indian investment? Because you talked about other sectors, but what what about we need a lot of in infrastructure and specifically in what has to do with green hydrogen, for example, we need a lot of in infrastructure to be able to export this uh, green to produce it, it transport it, etc. How do you see those possibilities? I understand that TCS, uh, Tata Consultancy Services, is uh, I don't know if the, if they're the thinking of investing in this area, but do you uh, do you know any other uh, companies or uh, or other Indian uh, investors in, in interested in in exploring this possibility in well, Chile? Uh, this is a new sector, and there is a lot of uh, you know. Uh, scope and opportunity in India, a lot of research and development is also going on in India. So both the countries are at, you know, uh, trying to promote green hydrogen. So we do see opportunities and there are some big players who might be interested, but so far uh, I do not have any specific information about, uh, you know, whether TCS or any other company is looking particularly at the green hydrogen sector, but it is an area 
where there is a lot of scope and possibility. We would like to encourage Indian businesses also to uh, look at this sector for uh, uh, mutual uh, benefit. Uh, infrastructure, we have, uh, you know, uh, a company which invested in, uh, uh, they have executed a solar power project. Sterling mm -hmm. and Wilson, they have in fact done three solar projects in Chile of a substantial amount of 190 megawatt, 122 megawatts. So uh, at a fairly large scale, uh, we have uh, done some solar projects here. Uh, then I I mentioned about Kalpataru, which is in the power transmission line segment. They have some other projects also, which are ongoing. As far as railways are concerned, we have a lot of expertise in the railway sector. Uh, recently, we had a delegation from Rights, which is a public sector company, uh, which can offer end-to-end -end solutions uh, uh, for feasibility study as well as for uh, supplying of uh, locomotives and rolling stock. Uh, they are also very interested, uh, not only in railways, but also I understand that here there is a lot of requirement of investment in ports, uh, etc. So we are conveying all these opportunities uh, back home and uh, trying to uh, get Indian companies to look at the opportunities that are present here for mutual benefit and partnership of both India and Chile. That's wonderful, Ambassador. And uh, how do you see, because we understand that the, the president of Chile has um, was going to visit India this year, but because of the elections, this was postponed. So we hope that this is going to happen at the, the in the first semester of the next of next year. How do you see that possibility of what would you suggest that we should uh, uh, take advantage of this visit in order to explore new sectors? What would you suggest to hold another Chile summit uh, to take advantage of this important visit? And on the other way around, is there any possibility of your prime minister visiting uh, Chile in the near future or or, or, or in the midterm at least? We know that he was just reelected, but still, uh, it will be very important for our relation relations to to to, to have him visiting Chile. I, I I don't know when was the last time that a prime minister, if a, a prime minister has visited Chile. Actually, I am not aware of that. Yes, there has been a very long gap. Uh, prime minister of India had visited, I think, in nineteen sixty eight. So certainly, ah. a visit by the prime minister would be very welcome. But uh, at this stage, uh, I would, uh, you know, we have to uh, see, uh, uh, wait and watch. And uh, there is, uh, uh, regarding the visit of President Boric to India, that is uh, definitely under consideration uh, in our uh, ministry. And uh, the dates are to be worked out uh, as per mutual convenience. So as soon as we have any information of that on that, we would definitely, you know, uh, be sharing with you. And uh, high level visits, of course, play a very important role in building and sustaining momentum in any bilateral relation. So whenever these visits uh, take place, it is, of course, the norm that they are accompanied by large business delegations. So we are looking forward to sustained level of interaction at the highest levels. Yeah, we 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 are sure that we're gonna do our best to have the high highest level um, delegation visiting India again, and also um, given second steps because I I I I I am sure that the many there were many first steps uh, in this first visit in this visit that we recently paid to do India. So it will be a wonderful opportunity to to do a a, a second stage. Um, and to develop some of the agreements that, for for instance, um, there was an offer of of one of the leaders of the of MSMEs uh, institutions there to hold one big summit for startups from Chile. So that's that's one thing that could be followed up. It will be very interesting. It's very difficult to 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 make startups travel so far away, but but I'm sure that along with a visit of a, a president, it could be maybe it could be possible. Um, in terms of going back to in, in, in the investment area, uh, th there's there's a question here from from um, let me see who, who's his name. It's uh, Octavio Aravena. 
Yeah, and I'm gonna say it in Spanish so and, and the interpreter could it could it translate it to you in English, Ambassador. Si, ¿Cómo pueden establecer eh, relaciones de colaboración en I más D en diversas temáticas, tales como litio, nuevos materiales, hidrógeno verde, ra radiofarmacia, entre otras? This is another kind of collaboration in, in what has to do with the um, uh, research and development, uh, Ambassador. How could you establish more collaboration in this regard? And maybe this has to be university to university or maybe institutes. Is there any, any plans in this regard? Are there things going on? So uh, recently we did have uh, our Secretary of Mines visit uh, Chile in April. He came uh, with a delegation of 15 companies, some from the public sector, some from the private sector, to explore opportunities uh, in uh, the lithium sector. And uh, there has been some discussion uh, uh, on this uh, between our, uh, uh, you know, uh, Indian company and with Inami here. Uh, but of course, that is uh, something which we have to see how it will proceed. India is definitely interested in sourcing of, uh, uh, you know, uh, critical minerals from Chile. And we hope that these partnerships will eventually fructify and lead to positive outcomes. Wonderful, Ambassador. And um, what opportunities would you say India offers now as a destination for foreign direct investment from Chile now, the other way around? Uh, so uh, Chile has also uh, invested in India. I think uh, numbers are about 180 million uh, uh, in the last few years. And I think some Chilean financial institutions have also invested in India. As you know, India has been become a very important and dynamic destination as far as foreign direct investments are concerned. And uh, this is not only because of the rapid, uh, you, you know, uh, improvement of the business environment, the ease of doing business, more facilities for investors, uh, a cut down on red tape and bureaucracy. So the government has made it a very investor friendly destination. In fact, we are one of the topmost destinations in terms of FDI. There are several sectors where 100% FDI is allowed. So certainly there is scope for Chilean investors to explore these opportunities. And is India adapting its investment land investment landscape to lure for investment? If so, how could this this could be better leveraged by potential Chilean investors? Is there anything going on in, in this regard? Uh, I think the best would be uh, for any potential investors to uh, engage with Invest India, who would be able to provide the guidance and the hand holding and. Uh, um, you know, uh, if there is a group that is interested, they could approach us, we could at least uh, put them in contact and, uh, uh, you know, facilitate uh, this dialogue. And uh, definitely we have been one of the highest recipients of FDI from around the world. So certainly I can assure you that there is an investor friendly climate in India. Definitely. And and actually in this visit, we we some of these um, um, big funds contacted us and they wanted to, to, to be in touch with possible investors, investors from Chile that are interested in, in going to India, et cetera. So there, there's a lot going on there, definitely. And um, now in, in a more, in a lot more, more related with what has to do with foreign affairs, uh, Ambassador, and in political terms, how does India see its participation in the BRICS? Okay. BRICS uh, has been a very important platform and uh, uh, for India, of course, these are all emerging economies which give us the common ground for participating in the BRICS uh, forum. And uh, there are several other countries who have been wanting to become member of BRICS, which shows that this is, uh, you know, another multilateral institution. And recently the BRICS was also expanded. And uh, this year there will be the BRICS summit, which will be of the expanded BRICS. So there is a lot of interest of 
uh, developing countries of emerging economies to participate in forums which are more relevant to them where their voice will be heard. So it is a very important mechanism for us too. Wonderful. And um, a, from an Indian perspective, what should be the priorities of the so-called so South-South Agenda? So, uh, India has played a leadership role as far as the global South is concerned. And uh, you would have, uh, you would recall that even during the presidency of the G20, India hosted the first Voice of the Global South Summit, which was an invitation to all the Global South countries to participate and to sort of hear from them, to give their voice center stage. And since then, uh, uh, there was a second uh, a Voice of Global South Summit and all the recommendations or the issues that are important to the Global South were crystallized to put forward in front of the G20. Because oftentimes what happened is that the priorities of the Global South have been relegated or not given the due space and attention. So India did take up that leadership position to bring it forward as part of the agenda of the G20. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the biggest outcomes and the achievements was to bring the African Union uh, to make it a part of the G20. So I think definitely there is a lot of potential and scope for South-South engagement. We have always been a believer in South-South engagement, South-South cooperation, which is very different and complementary to North-South cooperation. So when we talk of South-South cooperation, it is a partnership which we consider of equals, where there is no a donor or donee kind of a relationship, but it mm -hmm. is led by the partners on both sides to identify their objectives, their priorities, and to have uh, solutions which are developed in the Global South. Many of the innovations that we have had in India would have extreme relevance for other countries which are at similar stages of development. So these are partnerships which are very important. In fact, recently, just even before completing three months of the new government, Prime Minister again hosted the third Voice of Global South Summit, in which we are very happy that the President of Chile also participated. In fact, the Vice Minister of Education of Chile also participated in the Education Minister's session. So there is a lot of uh, you know uh, discussion and uh, thought uh, amongst the Global South countries of how to find their rightful place in the global agenda. Yeah, indeed. And considering what is going on right now and what has to do with international geopolitics, um, these kind of initiatives and um, take, a, take a bigger role or, or they have a big, bigger chance to, 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 to grow like... Um, other initiatives like uh, what, what takes place in Asia with a a ASEAN, for example, that they, they be have become stronger and stronger, looking for another alternatives, not having this north-south uh, relationship that uh, sometimes becomes a bit more difficult given what's going on geopolitically. So, Ambassador, we, we have um, completed uh, all the questions and uh, we also took in, in, into account most of the questions of the of the audience today. So I would like just to thank you once again for your availability today, with the, with your generosity, with your time, for having this webinar, this this ambassador series. Uh, we are very pleased to to get to know you better, to get to know the India and the possibilities that offers to us India for the foundation. It, it, we started working around what has to do with India about four or five years ago. We have taken it in, into account very much. We think that it's, uh, there's so much to do yet and um, the possibilities are endless. So we're very happy to contribute with uh, with information, with um, with establishing new, new networks. And um, so you can count on us, the foundation we're, we're here for, to helping you in your mission here in Chile, where you wish you the best success, you're just starting. And um, uh, we hope to see you again in, in the near future, uh, maybe next year when other visits have taken place, like our, the visit of our president, for example. And uh, thank you so much, Ambassador, again, and thank you for our audience 
that are very loyal and they were very interested in, in hearing you and your views and the information that you shared with us today, Ambassador. Thank you, much. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much. On my part, I would like to assure you, you may count on India as a reliable partner, as a friend. We believe in seeing the world as one family and partnerships are extremely important for us. Chile is a friendly country and all our support, you can rest assured, we will keep working to further our relationship. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to participate in this program. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Ambassador. Thank you very much.